Within the adult human organism, we have billions upon billions of individual cells. And on top of that, we have over 200 different types of cells that each carry out their own specific function and which have their own specific role in our body. For example, one specialized type of cell is a neuron. A neuron propagates electrical signals and allows communication to take place between different types of cells. And we have many examples of these specialized cells. Now, that's pretty fascinating because if we go way back to the beginning of embryological development when we first formed that zygote, the zygote is actually only a single cell and it is not specialized in any way whatsoever. Yet, that zygote somehow knows to divide and somehow knows to form the different types of cells that exist within our adult human body. So the question we're going to address in this lecture is how exactly does an unspecialized cell know to begin a certain set of processes that eventually allows it to form a special type of cell? So how does an, how does an unspecialized cell know, for example, to form a muscle cell and not a nerve cell? So these are the questions we're going to address in this lecture. So let's begin with the zygote stage. So when we form the zygote, the next step that happens is mitosis and the zygote begins to divide. So it forms this two cell embryo stage where we have two identical cells. This process continues. We form four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, 32 cells, and, and so on and so on until we form the billions of cells that are found inside the individual organism. So now, in the stage of the zygote and the two cell embryo stage, these cells are said to be totipotent. And what that means is they have a great deal of potential and they can form any and all the cells that make up that adult human organism. Now, as the process of development continues, as the cells continue, continue to divide and grow, their potential decreases and eventually their cell fate becomes determined. And this process is known as cell determination. So cell determination is the process by which a given unspecialized cell chooses the pathway that is going to follow, which eventually will lead it to forming a special type of cell. So this means that its cell fate is completely determined following cell determination and now it will follow a certain specific set of processes that will eventually lead it to forming that specialized type of cell. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose we have some type of unspecialized cell. So when this unspecialized cell undergoes cell determination, what happens is now it basically knows to follow a certain set of steps that will eventually allow it to form a specialized type of cell such as a neuron. And these steps following cell determination that allows it to form that specialized cell is known as cell differentiation. So before cell differentiation can take place, cell determination has to occur. So first, it's cell determination followed by cell differentiation and that's when we form that specialized type of cell. Now, a good analogy to this is the way that we choose our careers. So we know at the early stage of a person's life, before they begin school, they have the potential to become any professional. So they, be, they can become a physician, they can become a nurse, they can become a police officer, a banker, a quantitative analyst. So basically, at the early stages of our lives, we are totipotent. However, when we begin school and eventually when we get to college, in college, we have to choose our major. And once we choose our major, we basically determine the pathway that we're going to follow. And that pathway will eventually lead us to a certain type of career. And in an analogous way, at the early stages of life, at the early stages, those cells are totipotent. They can become any cell whatsoever, but 
as the process of development continues, eventually cell determination takes place. They choose their majors and eventually they undergo these set of processes called cell differentiation that allows them to become that nerve cell. So cell differentiation, for example, is analogous to a person choosing the pre-medical path and then following a certain set of processes, taking the prerequisite courses, taking the MCAT, volunteering, applying to medical school, going to medical school and so forth. And these processes eventually allow that person to differentiate into that physician. So these are the two processes that must take place before that specialized cell is actually produced. So next, let's discuss something called differentia uh, differential gene expression. So what exactly is differential gene expression? Well, differential gene expression is actually what allows a cell that has been determined to produce that specialized type of cell. So let's suppose we have the following diagram. So in this diagram, we have an unspecialized cell that undergoes cell determination and that basically uh, and that process chooses pathway one. Now we have a second type of unspecialized cell and uh, the same type of cell is here, but this cell chooses pathway number two. So pathway number one leads to a neuron while pathway number two leads to a skeletal muscle cell. So what exactly is the difference between pathway one and pathway two? Well, before we answer that question, let's examine what the difference is between a neuron and a skeletal muscle. So the most evident difference is the types of components and structures found within these two different types of cells. So the neuron contains an axon, it contains dendrites, it contains the axon hillock, it contains the axon terminal, while the skeletal muscle contains a specialized type of cell membrane known as the sarcolemma, it contains a specialized type of endoplasmic reticulum known as the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it also contains these long fibers made of actin as well as myosin. So what differentiates these two cells or any two specialized cells for that matter is the presence of different types of structures and components inside those cells. So it's those components that give these specialized cells their specific and unique characteristics. Now, all these different components are actually either formed by proteins or they are composed of proteins. And proteins come from DNA. So remember, inside the DNA, we have genes and the genes actually code for the proteins. So what differentiates pathway one from pathway two is the type of genes that are expressed and the type of proteins that are formed. So this is known as differential gene expression. So it's differential gene expression that allows cell one to follow pathway two and form a neuron, while cell two follows pathway two to form a skeletal muscle cell. So it's differential gene expression that allows cell differentiation to actually take place. Now, what about cell determination? What exactly is the mechanism by which cell determination actually takes place? What is the mechanism by which that cell chooses that major to follow and then follows that major to produce that specialized type of cell? Well, in most cases, cellular determination is due to a process known as inductive signaling that takes place between cells. Now, during inductive signaling, one cell produces a special type of inductive signal, a molecule known as a ligand. And that ligand moves on to a second cell and it influences the second cell to basically choose that major to begin following a specific type of instruction, set of instructions, that is cell differentiation to basically produce a special type of cell. Now, we have three mechanisms of inductive signaling. We have one called diffusion, one called direct contact, and the other one called gap, uh, gap junctions. 
So let's begin with diffusion. So in diffusion, what happens is one cell that is next to another cell begins to produce a special type of ligand molecule and that molecule diffuses across the cell membrane and into the extracellular matrix. And eventually this ligand moves on to a nearby cell. It attaches onto a special protein receptor found on the membrane and by attaching it creates some type of secondary mechanism response. And so let's say some type of part of that protein on the other side basically detaches and then creates a secondary metric system that eventually influences the transcription and the translational process of that cell. And that allows the production of specific types of proteins that eventually lead to forming the specific type of components and structures that are found with Within those specialized cells. So this is mechanism one of inductive signaling that allows cell determination to actually take place. Now, mechanic, uh, mechanism number two is direct contact. So in this case, it was a ligand that was produced by one cell and moved to a second cell. In this case, those cells actually physically interact. So what happens is a protein on one cell interacts with the protein on the membrane of the other cell and when they bind by binding that initiates the creation of some type of internal signal and then what that signal does is, is it alters the gene expression of that cell and that ultimately determines what type of pathway that cell will follow and what type of cell it will actually produce. And finally, we have gap junctions. So some cells are actually physically connected to one another via special type of junction known as a gap junction. And so in this case, what happens, one of the cells produces some type of signal, that signal moves along this gap junction and into the second cell and it influences the nearby cell to determine its pathway and eventually that will lead to a specific type of set of pathways, so cell differentiation, and it will form some specialized type of cell. So these are the three mechanisms by which inductive signaling takes place, which allows that cell to actually determine the fate of that cell, the pathway it will follow to produce some specialized type of cell.